I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about we even went to therapy together. You even went to therapy? Together. And it didn't work? Yeah, we went together. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us have some pretty bad stories about going to therapy. We're gonna share them, previous don't worry. Partners. <laughs> don't worry, it's chaotic. <laughs> yeah, mine was pretty insane. You know, sometimes a relationship doesn't work out and you may feel like your partner made no effort to repair it at all. And sometimes it's true, they don't. Mm. Other times, you and your partner did make an effort to repair it and it still didn't work. Sometimes you've even been to therapy with a partner and it still doesn't work. It could be very frustrating and discouraging when nothing works. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And in this video, we're going to talk about breakups that happen even after you have tried couples therapy together. <laughs> because many of you on our calls will describe to us what that experience was like, or you'll say, well, my partner was willing to go. We went to several sessions together. You know, sometimes it felt unproductive. Sometimes it felt like it was going somewhere. So you may have many different experiences with couples therapy mm -hmm. and be very disappointed at the outcome. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes people get into that situation when there's so much damage going on mm -hmm. and it's hard to turn it around, right? right. I made a, a reel about this recently where a lot of people will start to go to therapy when their relationship is just on the brink of collapse. Yep. And so that leaves the couple therapist with not as many uh, resources to really try to to fix it or turn it around, there's a lot more preventative things that you can do, you know, if you do get therapy earlier on. Mm -hmm. But it can be really hard once you're at that at that point to mm -hmm. say, well, this is our last ditch effort. And many times a partner will already have decided in their mind that they want to end the relationship at that point. Yeah, it's true because they've gotten so frustrated for so long and many times you've been asking them for a long time to go mm -hmm. and they finally go and it's just like I can't take it anymore. Yeah. This happened to me when I was young. I'll share one of my stories. Okay. You know, they say if you want to be a good therapist, you really should go to therapy yourself. They preach that to us in grad school mm -hmm. and Victoria went to the same program as me. Mm -hmm. And so I did. And I was dating a girl at the time and we had been together for a while and she had a temper. She would get mad, set off by small things. And I think she just kind of like grew up as an only child and was a little bit more selfish and always thought things should go her way mm. and wasn't very empathetic. And we were young at the time, like I said, I was in grad school. And I remember thinking, okay, I'm gonna get into therapy because I knew at that point I wanted to be a therapist. And so I had to get into therapy and I was doing individual and I liked it. But then I was like, as I was talking to my therapist, what was going on with her, he was like, you should do couples counseling with her, but get a different therapist. He didn't want to treat us both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I did. So I scheduled my appointment. Now this is at the college because it was free for students. And I lived like 45 minutes away from the college, but it's very difficult to get parking there, mm -hmm. as you know. So you sometimes go back and forth, back and forth, like the mall on Christmas mm -hmm. Eve, right? It's just impossible to find parking. So I got to the set, to the counseling center like five minutes late. She's in the waiting room and her leg is bouncing up and down and I could tell she was mm -hmm. enraged. And I kid you not, it was like five minutes late. And she starts screaming at me screaming at me. There was at least two or three people in the waiting room. My therapist was standing there. The new therapist was standing there screaming at me in front of everybody. The therapist, the, and just because I was so late. And she was just, you're so, I don't even remember what she was saying, maybe selfish or rude for being so late. And I was like, 
what do you want me to do? I came from far and there was no parking. You know, I couldn't find anything. I tried. I, I left early, but she it didn't matter. She was just enraged. I'm talking my therapist and the new therapist were looking at, they were terrified. They were like, oh my goodness. they were like literally like, what is happening right now? Ugh. All just because I got there a few minutes late. So we tried it and I don't remember how many times we went. I don't think we went very many times mm -hmm. after that because she really wasn't committed to the personal growth or to changing or taking responsibility for herself. Mm -hmm. But I, I'll never forget being in a situation where you're trying to repair things with a clinician and somebody, I mean, maybe in some way she was trying to sabotage it from the get-go, you yeah, know? Yeah. And there is this pressure that comes with going to therapy that somebody who um, is maybe thinking in their mind about breaking up um, or has, you know, emotional issues, it does touch on a lot of sensitive things. It's hard to go to therapy alone, let alone with your partner and work through these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it's not an easy task. And for many, it does take a lot for them to even just be willing to go. So I understand that. Sometimes you'll even see someone who is reluctant to go because they are not sure what side the therapist will take. Mm, you know, they will see this as a manipulation tactic, as you trying to get the therapist to, to reprimand you or to be on their side and you know to say that you're all wrong and how you've acted in the relationship is all wrong. So mm -hmm. some people will be very, very resistant to therapy. Yeah. And we really want them to go. We do. But you can't force them. Mm -mm. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. They have to want it. They have to want to participate in it. They, wanna, they have to have an attitude of this may be a challenge, but I'm going to push through it with you. Mm -hmm. If they don't and they feel like they're being dragged or forced, they're not going to have the right mindset or attitude to really participate and invest in it. And trust me, we've done sessions with unwilling participants and it doesn't go the way that you think it will. Mm -hmm. You know, you think, well, if we work with a therapist then they're just going to open up and it's going to be this perfect space for that. We can tell if there is a client who is resistant, a client who, you know, is not willing to open up and share or feels mm -hmm. uncomfortable in that space. You know, we as therapists often are new to this person as well. Mm -hmm. And it, it does take a, a lot of emotional energy to open up to a new person. So you had a client recently that didn't want to really invest in it or do it. Mm -hmm. And they did a couple with you, but yeah. yeah, you know, unless they're really actively wanting to be a part of it and change and grow, like it, it doesn't magically seep right. into your brain and transform you. Right. And just as much as you can't force a partner to go to therapy, therapists can't force participants to open up or to be therapized. You know, this is a process that is interpersonal. It involves both people, you know, sharing and giving input and guiding and all of these things. Uh, it's really hard to do if if there is a client who simply does not want to be there and is forced. Yeah, and sometimes they've already, they'll go with you, but they've already made up their mind. They're not really trying to fix it. They're not really trying to repair it. Mm -hmm. And they're just doing it to maybe stall or appease you for a little bit. But really, they've kind of decided they're going to end it anyway, regardless of how it goes in therapy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Therapy may have been unproductive for you. And there are a wide variety of therapists with wide variety of approaches and theories and uh, frameworks that they work from. Yeah. And so it can be hard to find a therapist that is aligned with your relationship, your relationship's values, you know, your culture, all of these things. And that can affect how productive a session is. And it can take some time to find the right therapist for you individually and also as a couple. And I will say personally, I have experienced some of that with my couples therapy story. <laughs> I remember my partner was not a social dancer at all. Mm -hmm. I'm a social dancer for those of you who don't know that. And so in, in many of our sessions, you know, this would come up. There was just this distrust of the social dance community uh, and some of the values that I personally had were not aligned with what the therapist had. Mm -hmm. And so that made sessions very difficult and in my my experience, I felt like the therapist focused on different issues than what were the core issues. And because of that experience, there were major, major, major things that were missed that later came to light. Yep. And so your therapist, she was so focused on her own agenda mm -hmm. and her own 
moral interpretation of how relationships should be, she wasn't really getting a full picture of what was going on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I remember in sessions, there were times where I would bring up, hey, I think we should talk about this topic. I think this topic is really important. And these were topics that just would get overshadowed by, you know, things that she saw was important, mm -hmm. which is completely okay. You know, of course, there's going to be different perspectives from everyone there. Each person in that couples therapy session is probably going to want to focus on something different. Um, but, you know, bringing up the concerns of your clients really is uh, an important thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, because, you know, if the therapist trying to push her own agenda, mm -hmm. she's not seeing what issues are really going on there right and really the things that she was concerned about which we won't share um not in this video mm -hmm. i'll share a separate video when you're not here <laughs> <laughs> but they, they were pretty major yeah you know pretty important and pretty basic things yeah um and so just be prepared before going to a session of having the things that might be important to you, having the things that might be important for your partner to talk about, and to you know respect both of those things. You might not see what is important to your partner as important, mm -hmm. but it is important to them. Yeah. So for many of you, individual therapy would work better than getting into couples therapy. Every situation is different, so it's hard for us to say, based on what's going on, what would be better for you. But individual therapy is always great, mm -hmm. right? And it can always help you navigate how to handle your situation or your relationship or your breakup. Now, let me just say, got to put this out there. Yeah. You know what I'm going to say? Therapists have no training with breakup advice. Okay, there's no course, although we could teach one. We probably could. Yeah. <laughs> we should. <laughs> give her, to give to programs because there are so many people that are devastated by breakups. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times a therapist is just going to say similar advice to some other coach <laughs> <laughs> or coaches. And sometimes they're operating from that stance of, you know, what you would do if you were to be together mm -hmm. that might not be applicable during a breakup. Mm -hmm. So they might be trying to approach your ex as, you know, how you would talk to them if you were an established couple, gotcha. which, you know, can very be, different. yes, very yes. different. Mm -hmm. And going back to the idea that some of you will see therapy as a last ditch effort, just because you did go to therapy as a couple does not mean that all options are exhausted. You know, we're talking here about some therapists that might not be able to to understand breakups or really be able to help you specifically for what you're going through or aren't as specialized. Yeah. And so, you know, just realize that there are other options there. Of course, we have coaching available, which is not the same as therapy, but we do have that available. Mm -hmm. um, we encourage you all to find a local therapist as well. Absolutely. Um, ideally, somebody who does specialize in relationships and attachment, they're gonna have a better idea of, of what's going on there. Absolutely. And other things I would mention too, is finding a therapist who, who does have experience working with couples and noticing that that therapist will assess the two of you individually at some point. I've had personal friends that will tell me, yes, I went to couples therapy with my partner, with my spouse. The therapist pulled me, pulled me aside and said, you know, listen, I'm seeing some very serious behaviors here that I have to warn you about. And so if a therapist does this or says this, you know, keep in mind that this is an objective third party. And, you know, I would consider those words. You want a good clinician who's able to assess things, see things differently from a clinical standpoint, see concerning behaviors and let you know. Yeah, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's frustrating and disappointing if you had a partner that doesn't want to get into therapy. Um, but just know that even if they did, it doesn't mean things were going to improve. Mm -hmm. They'd have to want it. So forcing somebody, coercing them, trying to push them, a lot of times it just winds up getting screamed at in front of everybody in the waiting room. And right? sometimes you doing your own individual therapy is a, a way to have some buy-in with your partner. Hey, I'm going to therapy and it's been really great for me. Might be something you want to try out if you're interested. It can be kind of the, the gateway to getting them interested themselves. You know, sometimes when one person does some self-improvement, they can kind of lift their partner up or lift the people around them up too. 
So that's the hope that we have for you. We think couples therapy can be a really great and productive thing. Of course, we think that you know it being preventative, going sooner rather than later, practicing the skills that you learn in couples sessions, mm -hmm. you know, and and really being willing to put in the work makes a world of a difference. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's like if you you go to your doctor and he says you have to take this pill for whatever you have, and you're and you don't take it. Well, if you don't participate in the treatment, you know, how good, what is the doctor going to do? He mm. can't do anything. Right, right. You know, so you got to have somebody that's willingly participating and actively participating in the sessions. Mm -hmm. All right. So hopefully this one's been helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you could do that on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon. Mm -hmm.